Welcome to Indianomics. Post-COVID, Indian economic growth has been characterized as K-shaped or growth marked by high inequality. The latest GDP data has accentuated these fears. While overall GDP growth is stunning, uh, growing by 7.3%, agriculture and allied services, which employ, you know, more than half the population, has grown by only 1.8%, or at least forecast by the NSO. The NSO also says that while services has grown by an overall 7.7%, very good, trade, hotels, transport and communication and employment-heavy sector has grown by only 6.3%, indicating that growth is probably getting cornered by fewer people. Again, consumption growth is only 4.4%, while gross fixed capital formation is up nearly 11%. This again raises fears that growth perhaps is not trickling down enough. However, this hypothesis has been contested by both the chief economic advisor, uh, Dr. Anand Nageshwaran, as well by the chief economist at SBI, Swami Kanti Ghosh. Uh, he, uh, he has written a recent paper debunking this uh, argument. Other scholars like Professor Santosh Mehrotra of JNU have been arguing that growth is indeed getting iniquitous, but their argument is that it has been iniquitous for the past several decades. Today, I have with me both these experts, Dr. Swami Kanti Ghosh of State Bank of India, Professor Santosh Mehrotra of JNU. I also have with me Pranjul Bhandari, the Chief India Economist at HSBC. Uh, Soumya, Pranjul and uh, Professor Mehrotra, thank you very much indeed for joining me. Okay, uh, well, let me start with you, Shomyo, since uh, your paper uh, gives some data on how tax collections are showing a greater mobility of people from the lower echelons to the higher echelons. Can you tell us what makes you think that growth seems to be uh, coming along with a reasonable shift in mo uh, mobility in classes as well? Yeah, thank you, Lata, for having me on the show. I think there are two parts to this report. Uh, just let me make it very clear. The first is regarding the tax paying data, uh, which basically if we do a uh, big stick survey, that is 37% of the formal labor force in India, formal labor force in India. And the second part also we have done is basically there's, uh, as you know, the Indian labor market is characteristic by an high informality content. There are several estimates of it, but the PLF has estimates it around 40%. So if I leave aside that, there are two parts to this exercise. First is trying to understand whether the consumption inequality across the top of the pyramid and the bottom of the pyramid is getting more worse. For that, we had actually done an exercise to find out that the top 10% of the population was cornering around 65% of the overall consumption. However, I will not get into the details. We found out that in the last three to four years, the share 65% has possibly reduced to close to 60.5%. You can call it at 61 or 60% as you like. And this is mostly the result of the programs which the government is running in terms of the social infrastructure, like the free food program and other programs. And if we and given the fact that government has already announced that it will run this program for the next five years, this share could actually go down to as much as 50%. So maybe in the next six to seven years, the bottom 90% of the pyramid could actually consume 50% of the overall consumption expenditure, which was 35% at that point of time. So I am, I think definitely it's a matter of, uh, I'll not say a matter of rejoice, but it's a, it's a matter of satisfaction, at least that the share which was being cornered by the top 10% in terms of consumption is getting reduced. Mm -hmm. So that's first thing. So this is regarding the informal part. If, uh, the second part is regarding the tax data, which is basically 37% of the formal labor force. The results are out there in the public domain. And I think here we found that there has been a great progression of income for the people who are paying less than rupees 3.5 lakhs. We found that that is number is 36.3%. The important part is that 19.5% of the small farms are also, if you look at the income tax data, also moved out of the uh, uh, lower uh, uh, five mm. crore category to higher. And this is, in fact, interestingly, is also substantiated by a recent table in the RBI report on currency and finance, which also shows the same thing, that perhaps the MSME units, some of the MSME units are getting bigger in terms of getting integrated to the value chain. 
We have also calculated the our other things, the average mean income, which we found a better measure than the average income okay. because average means we take up everything. And also the question on inequality, where you found that the distribution which was left, left heavy some time back is now becoming more of a normal distribution. Okay. So overall, and there are other things which I'll get into if I have time. So overall, the results show that, yes, in economics is always if growth happens, there is a concern in inequality, but some of the concerns which has been expressed continuously may be a little more overrated. Okay, point taken. Uh, Shomyo, I have some reservations with some of the data, or rather some counter data, but uh, let me get to the uh, uh, guess first. Uh, Professor Mehrotra, you know, all growth is unequal. You can't take away from that because there are always people with... Uh, uh, differing skills. But is growth at the moment even more guilty than in the past? Is there evidence for that? I think it's... The, the situation is the following. We have to look at the entire economy. And my uh, quibbles with uh, my good friend, uh, Shomyo, uh, are that he's looking at a rather small part of the economy. Mm -hmm. So let's just look at what the e economy, the size structure of India's enterprises looks at. Mm -hmm. I'll come back to his argument about organized sector mm -hmm. and, and, and genie and all that in a minute. Because in some ways, those are the weakest. I think first your, read, your viewers have to understand what the size structure of India's non-farm enterprises is. Mm -hmm. There are 66 million non-farm enterprises in this country. Okay. That's what the NSS tells us. Of which no more than 30% are registered anywhere in the government. That means 70% of these non-farm enterprises are not heard about at all. Mm. They don't know any, you know, the government doesn't know anything about them. And even among the 30%, the so-called registered, mm they tend to be registered under a variety of acts and authorities across the whole country, across our 28 states and eight union territories. So there is no collation of data. So the fact of the matter is, the government of India, and for that matter, the state governments simply do not have information about the vast majority of enterprises. So when my good friend Shomyo is talking about the organized sector. Mm. We are talking about an extremely tiny sliver of the con entire size structure of the total enterprises. Okay. And even within the organized sector, which sort of accounts for, as he said, 37 million workers, there are regular workers who are, and there are non-regular workers, mm. contractual workers. So, Let's go back to what happened in 2016. A massive ex exogenous shock was delivered to the unorganized sector of this economy by the demonetization at four hours notice. They have barely, they have never recovered from that. In fact, we don't even have data since then, despite the fact that the NSO is collecting data every year from 2019 onwards. 2019-20, okay. the first annual unorganized sector enterprises survey was done, not released. 2021, mm. another. 21-22, another. 22-23, another. Yeah. And still none of that data has been released. So we have information from varied sources inevitably mm. that uh, that because the unorganized sector accounts for most of the non-farm jobs. Yeah. And the PLFS is telling us something about that. The Periodic Labor Force yes. Survey, which is done annually, is telling us something about that. Okay. That they have suffered and suffered deeply. Okay. Because had they not suffered, you wouldn't have 60 million workers having gone back to agriculture in the last three years. Okay. From April 2020 okay. to the middle of 2023, there was an increase in the number of workers in agriculture. Okay. A significant share of those have gone back from the cities. And you would think that people have come back. Some have come back. 
but obviously more are joining agriculture uh, professor Bahiratra, that has raised the share of agriculture in our total enterprise now but professor Bahiratra, if the jobs point is are taken. not growing in the non farm sector yeah. that's the reason why people are not coming back okay plfs data is telling us that yeah professor Bahiratra, because the you know, i'll have was to poorly planned then we got a national lockdown at four hours notice yeah professor Bahiratra, you know i will have to get first comments from other panelists as well and then i'll come back to you uh, Pranjul, what's your observation? You know, uh, we can't look at a very long period uh, in a very short show. But is there any accentuation just going by the uh, current GDP data, which seems to indicate that things are very good on the headline front, but consumption is not picked up, raising worries about whether it's unequally distributed? Yeah, I think there were very strong tones of a K-shaped recovery uh, during the pandemic period and coming out of it, uh, because the bottom of the pyramid faced three shocks, one after the other. One was the lockdowns. The second was the oil price increase, which suddenly happened the year after, you know, really impacting the fortunes of small firms. Uh, and then through this whole period, rains have gotten far more erratic and agricultural production have be has become far more volatile. So all of this has played, you know, in the, on the bottom of the pyramid. So there has definitely been this K-shaped recovery phenomenon. But I would also argue that what I'm seeing in the last year or year and a half I think there have been some improvements. You know, three things uh, to be specific. One is oil prices have come off. Mm. That has been great. And I can see from the data that I track that the profit margins of some of the SM MSMEs has actually improved. Uh, their cost of production has come off. Uh, the salaries they pay, you know, have gone up. Their market share has recovered, recovered somewhat. So that is one thing. The other is on the rural front. We know that agricultural production has been extremely weak in an El Nino year. Mm. But over the last year or so, construction has really picked up. Yes. And construction wages have been have gone up and they've provided somewhat of a buffer to rural consumption. Uh, I will not argue here that rural consumption is strong. It is rather weak. But to be honest, it could have been even weaker had we not got the help from a construction mm. sector. And then we find a data on credit growth. We are seeing how credit growth to small firms is very, very large. Mm. Uh, for the first time, many unbanked firms are getting access to credit. And I think all of these factors together, at least in the last one year, have made this uh, K-shaped phenomenon a little less dramatic. Okay. Uh, well, uh, Shomyo, before we take the first break, you get, the, uh, you get another uh, chance to uh, speak about the data that you have. Uh, you know, uh, Professor Merotra's point is well taken that the taxpaying uh, audience or the taxpaying category is very small in India. So, you know, it's 4.8%, I understand, of uh, the total population. So, probably, you know, even if there is a little more of mobility from the lowest category to the higher category over there, that doesn't mean that uh, there isn't inequality or a greater pain in the uh, low, lower income brackets. After all, MNREGS demand is very high. So, would you say that that is not data enough? Uh, see, Lata, uh, I think we have to be a little more pragmatic in terms of the data interpretation. Yes, the number of taxpayers today in India is around 8.2 million. I think uh, last uh, count on 31st December was around 82 million. This number could be closer to 90 million by March 31st. But please understand that a taxpaying individual also supports a family. The family size could be of three and four. And if we take the taxpaying family as a percentage of the total labor force, mm. that is at 37%. So when you are making the interpretation in terms, apart, not in terms of the population, but you have to see in terms of the percentage of labor force. That's that's the first thing. And the second thing which Professor Mirath was, was saying about the unorganized sector data, let us for the assume, assume that all this data is actually correct. There is a portal of the government, which is called the Uttam portal, where the SME data of the farms, which are not even registered with the banks, is getting collected on a real-time basis. Do you know the number today which has been there? This exercise was started last January. Today, this number is around 3.3 .3 crores, and the total number of GSTN in, uh, portal is 1.4 crores. So there are tax, uh, there are farms which were not registered earlier, they are actually now, all this information is now available in public domain to the banks, and that actually answers a lot of questions about the India's enterprise in terms of the organized sector. Okay. The okay. other data points I'll just mention, the share of the agricultural sector has declined from 16.5 to 14.4% in the last 10 years. Manufacturing has increased from 51.1 to 54.6%, 
of 89% of which is being contributed by finance and administration. Mm. So my simple point is that growth, with growth, there will be some amount of inequality, but perhaps this should be backed with data mm. and may not be with evidences. That's mm. the only limited point which I want to make. Okay. Well, there is some evidence that weak, uh, you know, uh, if uh, uh, I think Sovereign Chakravarti analyzed the uh, earnings of companies and found that uh, uh, the amount of money spent, the wage cost has gone down over the past uh, few quarters. Uh, so clearly, even within the organized sector, the distribution of income perhaps is indicating some inequality. But I have to take a break. We're going to come back with more questions and answers from our panelists. Back in a jiffy. Welcome back. Uh, we had a strong GDP growth number, but uh, the small worries about this growth number is that uh, it perhaps is getting unequally dis distributed, evidenced by the fact that agriculture shares were falling, fallen just a growth of 1.8%, and uh, consumption has not picked up, stands at just 4.4%. I've been speaking with Shaumi Kandigosh of State Bank, uh, Professor Santosh Behrotra of JNU and Pranjul Bhandari of HSBC. Gentlemen and Pranjul, thank you very much for your patience. Uh, well, Professor Mehrotra, you know, absence of data cannot mean that it must be unequal. Uh, the uh, fact remains that the government is also giving five kilos of free grains to a very large number of people and there are other, uh, you know, uh, public goods like uh, gas connections and water supply and electricity which have increased in the last few years. Uh, wouldn't that be ameliorating the inequality in some way? It would be ameliorating poverty. Okay. It would not be ameliorating inequality, I'm sorry to say. Okay. And honestly, mm -hmm. when I talk about 66 million enterprises, let's ju just remind ourselves that this is data from 2015-16 and this is NSS data. So it's about ro as rock solid as it can be. It is just tragic that the NSSO is not revealing the unorganized sector enterprises survey data. I go along with the sort of couple of points that Pranjul made, profits of MSMEs. The registered top-end MSMEs may well have gone up. Construction activity, I agree with her. It has been on the upswing in during the recovery, and we know that construction jobs are growing but they are not growing at anywhere close to the rate at which would, would that would pull workers out of agriculture. Those are precisely mm -hmm. the kinds of activities that would pull workers out of agriculture. We are not seeing evidence of that. The PLFS data is proving that. Mm -hmm. Thirdly, free food. Free food, why is the government so uh, being so generous? Partly it's being generous for on account of the impending elections and the just December 3 election results. But let's just remember that the government realizes that joblessness is high, youth unemployment is, is extremely high. All the data points towards that. Non-farm jobs have not been growing and all the so-called jobs that have grown have been mostly either own account workers who have moved in who move, who, because they've got they've lost regular work okay. the lfs data is showing that they've lost regular work and they become own account workers yeah. and they've become self employed and 50 million people have been added to the category of unpaid family labor mm. that means the the little household that that's in the urban areas is a vendor selling pakoras mm -hmm. now the wife has joined hands or the woman in the family farm has joined the family farm. You know, when you're talking about a workforce, which is 570 million, yes. you want to look at 8% of, of the, of the or 4.8% of the workforce, which has, which are taxpayers. And they are not all taxpayers because most of these people who file returns are not yeah, actually taxpayers. Right. That point is taken. And then you say, okay, among those who are taxpayers, among the, in other words, of the 4.8%, probably half yes. um, are tax, actual taxpayers, and within that, it's improved. Yeah. Come on, you're not making a serious argument. No, no, I, I agree with you that the percentage of tax filers uh, tends to be 8%, but if you actually looked at the 
number of taxpayers, it's, uh, you know, far less. It's a good two percentage point. Lata, less. One final point about yes. the Udyam and the GST. Just yes. one, very briefly. Of course, I'm perfectly aware of the Udyam registration, the GST registration. Who is who's registering under the GST and the Udyam? The largest ones among the so-called MSMEs. And I'm saying the vast majority are not even registered anyway. Okay. Then of the, those who are registered, there are only 30% registered somewhere or the other. Of that, some small fraction have now come into the Udyam and GST. My good friend Soumya needs to recognize this. Yeah. Needs to recognize no. this. No, I, mean, I, I, I don't think the point is uh, taken away that there is a large unorganized sector in India. But my, what I'm trying to get at is whether the last two, three years are seeing an accentuation. We cannot correct, uh, you know, a century-old inequality. But are we getting worse, was my question. Uh, you know, it's incrementally. It's worse in the last eight, seven years. No question. Okay, okay. Uh, well, Pranjul, uh, any more anecdotal data? What we f find is that Staples companies are not showing very high volume growth. But a titan, uh, you know, sees very high volume growth. Uh, is, uh, is there evidence in corporate sector to indicate that there may be higher inequality? Or is this evidence not enough? Yeah, look, uh, you know, there's just there's so much of data out there and anecdotal evidence, and it's very hard to sort of bring it all in like five, ten minutes. Uh, but, you know, I'll just go back to the point I made on construction. Uh, you know, the data that I'm seeing is that uh, there is a lot of movement uh, of, of rural Indians from farm to construction over the last year, year and a half. Uh, and we are actually also seeing it in the remittances data. Mm. Uh, you know, you get good remittances data from urban to rural, and that has really spiked up. Uh, and, and I think that is providing somewhat of a cushion at a time when there is, you know, this whole El Nino-led low production in rural India. So the, uh, the, 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 the uh, role of construction should not be undermined. And I think at some point you also said that uh, investment uh, being so high means uh, that, you know, in a way it is it's supportive of K-shape for some yes. reason. But to the extent K, uh, investment leads to higher construction activity, I think that does create some of the jobs. You yeah. can argue about the quality of the jobs, but they, it does create some of the jobs. But, but taking a step back, if I very simply, you know, divide India into old India and new India, you know, the, the truth is that growth has been created in the last couple of years primarily by new India, which in my view makes up only 15% of India's okay. GDP. It has all the things like high skill manufacturing, you know, the whole services sector we've been talking about, GCCs, the digital public infrastructure, startups and all of that. They've been growing very well in the last three to four years and they've been causing most of the growth. And with just them growing, we can continue to have some more growth, uh, high growth for a longer period of time. Yeah. But at the same time, 85% of GDP, which is old India, uh, you know, it's not benefiting in the same way. Yeah, Pranjul, uh, and I would say Pranjul I'm out of time. I'm sorry I have to cut you off. Uh, Shaumyo has to get the last word. Uh, Shaumyo, would you worry that, uh, you know, if you continue to have capital expansion, you know, investment-led growth, and if consumption doesn't pick up, then even that capital expansion will not happen because there, there isn't enough consumption. Could we, lead to, could we be leading to that kind of a situation? Yeah, Lata, can I just take a second to just sure. uh, mention one point yes. regarding the Uddam? I think I look into the Uddam portal and 99.94% of the Uddam registration are actually coming from the micro enterprises who are outside the banking system. So that's so there are many data points which you can mention, but I'll not get into that yeah. in terms of the unpaid workers also. But to the larger points of your uh, investment boom, I think uh, the, the construction activity, one important point we need to mm -hmm. understand is that uh, the investment in construction activity was used to be uh, quite employment intensive some time back, maybe yeah. a decade back. Now I don't know how much employment intensive it could be because nowadays a lot of these things are became uh, institutionalized and uh, the, the that's right. I, I was going much. to say that yeah, a lot of the yeah. bridge building is not that labor intensive. Exactly. Perhaps it's so only maybe, house construction uh, that is labor yes. intensive. So I yeah. think that so I think that at the end of the way the investment is fine, but uh, and to the larger point of consumption, the growth, we all know that it was at 4.4% last quarter. But I think over a point of time, the consumption growth is going to broad, is okay. going to broad base because we are already seeing in terms of the rural economy. I don't have time to discuss that, but there is a, the credit growth to the agricultural sector this year has been very good. 
And the most defining characteristics, if you know, which we actually are seeing in our bank also, a large number of farmers are now selling their crops on the Enam platform okay. and getting DBT transfers directly. Okay. So well, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. We will have to end on that note. We are completely out of time and in fact over time. But uh, uh, the point is taken that we don't have adequate data to measure, uh, you know, what has been the trickle down of growth. And I think uh, uh, besides the lack of data, there is a lack of time as well. Well argued. Thank you very much, uh, Shomyo, Professor Behrotra and Pranjul Bhandari. We have to wind up on this edition of Indianomics. Thanks so much for watching.